Well, for this game, it's impossible to draw the matrix form because there are infinitely many strategies. So you can, you can contribute zero dollars, you can contribute one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, etc. And by the way, I mean, why one dollar? Like, what about 50 cents, 10 cents? All right, so there's any number between zero and one dollar. Is, is, is admissible. So therefore, there are infinitely many possible strategies for both players. So we can't really draw the matrix form. Uh, in that sense, it's relatively a hard game. But we nevertheless can talk about the Nash equilibria of this game, all right? So the equilibria is the plural version of equilibrium, all right? Uh, and in this game, there are uh, in fact, infinitely many possible equilibria, all right? Uh, however, these infinitely many possible equilibria can be divided into two groups. So, uh, group one, let me call it group one. Um, well, there's only one equilibrium. Uh, well, yes, there's only one equilibrium. So, Bob and Ray, they both contribute zero dollars. So this is a Nash equilibrium, is a Nash equilibrium, all right? Well, there's a, a group two. So here in this group, there are many. So in this group one, there's only one Nash equilibrium, but in group two, there are many Nash equilibrium. Um, what are they? Well, G, B, G, R, um, you know, greater than or equal to zero, zero, is a Nash equilibrium if whenever uh, GB is less than RB, which is $50, GR less than RR, which is 70 divided by $3, and GB plus GR exactly equal to $70. So basically all pretty efficient uh, ways of splitting the cost is also Nash equilibrium, all right? Um, so, for example, uh, Bob um, um, contributing $50, Ray contributing $20 is a Nash equilibrium. Bob contributing $51 and Ray contributing uh, the, the rest uh, so once again, Bob contributing $49 and Ray contributing $21 is also Nash equilibrium. All right, so there's in fact infinitely many possible Nash equilibria. And in fact, that's it. There is no other, there is no other Nash equilibrium. Well, uh, so I will try to convince you in a moment why these are Nash equilibrium, because it's important in an exam, you have to show me uh, why these are Nash equilibria. So you have to make a formal argument. So I'm gonna show what it means. Uh, but first of all, let's try to understand what these statements are saying. Well, basically it says, all Pareto efficient ways of splitting the cost is, per, uh, is, is, can be supported as a Nash equilibrium of this game. So there are multiple Nash equilibria. So playing this as a game, uh, I mean the private public good provision game, doesn't really solve our problem in the sense that uh, they still cannot decide uh, which way to split the, uh, the cost. But nevertheless, uh, sort of deciding how they are going to, uh, I, I mean, this, so this particular game kind of allows those agents uh, to make um, an independent decisions, all right? I mean, the, no authority tells them, like a government, tells them to, oh, Bob, you should pay this much, Ray, you should pay that much. These guys, these agents, come together and they independently act to maximize their utilities. And if they play this game, in fact, they are going to end up some pretty efficient allocation. Uh, so which one of those allocations they're gonna end up? Well, that depends because all the feasible, uh, I'm sorry, efficient, pretty efficient allocations, pretty efficient way of splitting the cost is an Nash equilibrium. So they may decide 
any one of they may play any one of those Nash equilibria, assuming that they will play Nash equilibria. Um, uh, but at least no third party will impose the uh, uh, decision onto those guys. Well, that's sort of lesson number one. Lesson number two, well, unfortunately, though, if we let them make their own decision, they may actually end up not owning the public good. And we know that not owning the public good is not an efficient, pretty efficient outcome because these guys' reservation prices adds up to RB plus RR is strictly greater than the cost. So it's always pretty efficient to own the public good. So they should buy the sofa, all right? Not buying it is, is pretty inefficient because buying it is going to make both better off. But there is a Nash equilibrium of this game where they actually don't buy the sofa. So I call this bad equilibrium and I call these good equilibria. All right, so one of those good equilibria could happen, all right, and one of this bad equilibrium could happen. So which one of those is going to happen? Well, it depends, right? So in some societies, uh, they kind of coordinate on the bad equilibrium and they keep continue playing that because it's regret free. And in some societies, under exactly the same situations, they end up playing the good equilibrium. All right. Uh, so there's a large sort of philosophical debate, you know, why some societies or some set of agents uh, coordinate on good equilibria and in, in some other situations, in, in some other societies, they coordinate on, on the bad equilibria. So I'm not going to get into that debate, but it's, it's, it's possible. So if there is no third party imposing a decision on these two agents, uh, they may actually end up playing the bad equilibrium. And it is equilibrium. I mean, it's going to be a regret-free outcome. So now, um, well, given that I have a few more minutes, let me try to convince you why these are Nash equilibria, okay? Maybe this is more important uh, if this was an exam question. So this is, so the first one, the zero, zero, uh, is a Nash equilibrium, is, is basically the idea is the following. Uh, remember, the Nash equilibrium is the allocation where no agents, once the allocation is realized, no agent is going to regret from his or her choice. So, right? so if this is the outcome, uh, Bob is gonna, not going to regret because if this is the outcome, it means they don't buy the sofa. All right? So they don't buy the sofa, they contribute nothing, and so the Bob's utility is going to be one times uh, I think Bob had $100, so his utility, uh, so the W Bob was 100 and WR the Ray had $70, if I'm not wrong. So the Bob's utility will be 100 in this case. Well, the question is, uh, given that the Ray was uh, paying nothing, will Bob prefer to pay $70? Remember, we did this calculation in the previous uh, uh, video. And the Bob does not want to pay more than $50. And $50 is not enough to buy the sofa. So therefore, there is no way Bob can increase his utility all, all above 100, uh, given that the Ray is not contributing anything. So the Bob is not going to regret from his choice. Similarly and symmetrically, Ray is not going to regret his choice because Ray, his utility will be... Uh, the sofa is not bought, so his utility will be two times x. Um, so when x is, I think he had seventy dollars. So seventy times two, so one hundred and forty is the utility level, and there is no way he can increase that uh, because, uh, well, I mean, if he contributes. Uh, he's going to decrease his private consumption. So if he contributes, he should contribute enough to buy the sofa, but that means he should contribute all his wealth. But if he does that, well, we know that uh, paying more than reservation price always decreases his utility below the utility of no sofa, and then uh, uh, the X is equal to the wealth. All right, so that's, remember, this is how we found the reservation value. So it's very important to understand what reservation value really means. 
if it wasn't clear, go back to that video and, 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 and do all these exercises and convince yourself that you understand the reservation price. So the bottom line is that both Bob and Ray are not going to regret their choices if this is the outcome and hence it is an Nash equilibrium. Okay, as simple as this with some, you know, simple of oh, the utility is greater than or, or less than is, is, is sufficient. So the, the second group of uh, strategies are Nash equilibrium. Again, the, the gist is the following. So it is regret free. Uh, how so? So here there's infinitely many possible uh, cases. That's true. But pick one of those and, and convince yourself in a sense. So for example, GB equals 50 and then GR, the ray contributes $20. So is this a Nash equilibrium? Well, if this is the case, what's going to be the Bob's utility? The, the Bob's utility in this case is going to be, well, the, they're going to, afford the sofa. So S is going to take the value one. So it's going to be two times his private consumption. So he spends $50 on sofa. So his private consumption is going to be wealth minus 50. So 50 times two. So his utility will be exactly 100. And the raise utility is going to be um, two plus one because S is going to take the value one. So three times uh, 50 his private consumption. So 50 times 350 uh, utility level. So the question is, can Bob, so once this is the outcome and they observe the outcome, will Bob say, oh, you know what? I could do better utility than 100. Uh, well, he won't because, well, in order to increase his utility, he should be, you know, sort of uh, contributing something different than 50. So if you, if, if Bob contributes more than 50, well, they will afford the sofa, but contributing more is just meaning burning your money and it will decrease your private consumption. So therefore contributing more is not going to make you happier. It's not going to make Bob happier. Okay. Well, what about contributing less? Uh, well, if you contribute less, for example, $49 rather than 50, well, the sum of the contribution is going to de decline below uh, 70. So they can't afford the sofa. So S is now going to take the value zero rather than uh, one. So if you contribute, for example, 49, so GB prime $49, while the Bob's utility U B prime is going to be what? Well, his utility is S switches to zero. All right. So one plus zero. So it's one times X B. So what is X B? His private consumption wealth minus contribution. Fifty one dollars. Fifty one. So one times fifty one. So fifty one. Clearly less than hundred. Well, look, if I am not buying sofa, the best payoff I can make in this case is basically not contributing anything, all right? So it's GB prime, so let's call it GB double prime, should be zero, so, you know, go all the way to zero contribution. Well, in this case, my utility, UB double prime, is gonna be, the Bob's utility, I mean, gonna be one times, because S is still zero, because they can't uh, uh, cover the cost of the sofa. So one times XB, and XB here is exactly equal to, uh, 100 minus zero contribution, I mean 100, all right? So therefore his utility will be 100, all right? Which is exactly the same as his utility in this case. So what does that mean? That means the Bob cannot increase his utility by paying more than 50, all right? So he will never pay more than his reservation price. Um, and paying lower than his reservation price is not going to bring him more happiness because in this case, they're not going to be able to afford the sofa. And hence, his utility cannot be, I mean, he, he can't increase his utility. So he's not going to regret his choice here. Exactly the same logic for Ray. Ray is not going to uh, regret his choice. Why not? Well, again, 
He does not want to increase his contribution because that means wasting money. He is not going to decrease his contribution because he knows that if he decreases his contribution, he is going to get, he can get at most uh, 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 his utility when he, he doesn't contribute anything. And in which case his utility was 140, which is lower than 150. So there's no way Ray can increase his utility either. So... Therefore, this is a Nash equilibrium, it's a regret-free outcome. But what is special about 50-20? Nothing. If I change this as GB less than RB, GR less than RR, all right? So these are important because, so 50 is the highest price Bob is willing to pay. Above that, it's never optimal for him. He prefers whatever the other guy does, he prefers to uh, a contribute zero instead. All right. So um, therefore, as long as GB is less than 50, GR is less than 70 divided by three, and they sum up exactly equal to 70, it must be a Nash equilibrium. All right. Well, I know it's already long, but let me just say the following things. Uh, for example, there will be no Nash. I mean, I already said these are the only Nash in this game. That means uh, for example, G, B, G, R, such that G, B plus G, R uh, less than uh, 70 is not a Nash equilibrium, all right? Uh, why is, well, I mean, they are, so they are contributing positive amounts, but the sum of their contributions cannot hit the $70. So, for example, Bob pays $20, Ray pays $20. Is it an Ash equilibrium? No. Why? Well, because they wasted $40. They can't afford, I mean, they can't buy the sofa, according to the rules of the, right? I mean, their total sum, the total contribution is less than $70. So there's going to be no sofa. And they're not going to get their money back. All right. So therefore, uh, they're wasting their money. The, the, the better thing, so they're going to regret from this choice. The better thing for them to do is to contribute nothing. All right, so these are not Nash equilibrium. Another no Nash is uh, GB plus GR strictly greater than 70. All right, well, so um, you contribute $50, I contribute $23. All right, so, so basically we are contributing less than or equal to our reservation price, uh, but we are contributing $73. Well, uh, this is going to be a regretful outcome for Ray, not, well, also for Bob. Uh, they both could actually uh, contribute less, $3 less, and still afford the sofa, but you, they could use that three extra $3 for private consumption rather than wasting it. All right. So here I hope you see why uh, extra money that's collected will be wasted is an important assumption in some sense. It, it basically makes those uh, sort of situations not an equilibrium. OK, um, so that's it. Uh, I hope uh, the example and the explanation was clear.